Rivers, DN 46890. The commander is expecting you in the control room, Sergeant. Marachino Charings again. Where do they keep finding this shit? I don't get it. How did they bring that buggy down? Hey, Ryan, how's everything? Uh, exactly as you would imagine. Barons keep me busy. They weren't kidding when they said she's a hard ass. What did you hear? A lot of rumors going around of how she's sending insubordinate workers to the front line. And by insubordinate, I mean people who ain't willing to work 18 hours a day. Every day. What happened after you started your camp? Honestly, not that much. At least not in the beginning. When we gave up on the idea of getting in touch with anyone, we just tried to adapt. Temperatures fell, we had to scavenge for food. All of a sudden, that became our life. Didn't you try to reach home? Some people did. Most of us were scared of what we'd find if we did get home, so we conveniently said we are stranded here anyways and stayed. Well, I know how stupid it sounds, but we managed to have fun in our little commune. I still had my guitar with me. We talked a lot about how we're gonna be famous, because we're the only living band in the world. You played in a band? I did. One of the few things I was better at than Tucker. He didn't have much talent, but he loved the idea of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Especially the first two. We were just stupid kids, not realizing what was going on. We paid the price for it the first time we saw a tin can. I was tuning my guitar when I heard a strange noise. I found out later that it was a T-400. Must have heard me play. It didn't even have the decency to look scary. Maybe if it did, we wouldn't have just stood there when it started firing. What did you do? I froze. I didn't run to help. I didn't scream. I didn't even move. I just stood there, like a coward. The tin can got Tucker with a single bullet. Bam! Just like that. Seven other people died before we finally destroyed that thing. Ironically enough, I was the one who delivered the final blow. Safe to say, it was the beginning of a new era. Do you need anything? Can I see your hardware? Adjusted person in this goddamn place. It's the others you should be concerned about. You mean Ryan? Ryan ain't so hot either, but that's another story. 
Jennifer? I'm worried about her. I'm the one that asked Baron to give her team a little break. Jennifer's been busy scavenging supplies for the soldiers, and she hardly had time to see Patrick. And now she's finally got a day off. She's avoiding him like the plague. How's Patrick doing? He's fine, but it wouldn't kill you if you checked on him yourself. Is there anything you need? No. I have to say, the Resistance is pretty well supplied. Don't tell me you miss running errands for me. I don't believe that for a second. And what about something other than medicine? Honey, I'm not shy. I'll let you know if I need anything, okay? But thank you for asking. Take care. <coughs> How are you doing? Good. Aaron's going to let me leave in a couple of days. Thanks for bringing that chalk. I've been drawing a lot. I'd be so bored without it. How do you like living in the shelter? There's a lot of people here. I like that. I heard a funny joke yesterday. You want to hear it? Yeah, tell me. What's well, brown and sticky? A stick. <laughs> That's funny. I know, right? How's Jennifer? She's out a lot, but I understand. She's a scavenger. I have to go. <laughs> Alvin lost his spider scout again. Man, I saw it crawling through the shelter earlier. Almost gave me a heart attack. You wanted to see me. You're finally here. Good. I have a special task for you. I want you to head downtown to check on the doctor. Doctor? Alvin. He's out there making sure that our defense systems are working properly. Ever since we went radio silent, I had a small team of trustworthy messengers maintaining communication between our outposts. They haven't returned. So I want you to go downtown and see why that happened. Could be nothing. But Connor doesn't want any hiccups while he's up there in North Division preparing the attack on Skynet's central core. Is there a problem with the radio? The Annihilation Line is within spitting distance of downtown. We suspect that Skynet will be intercepting all transmissions from that location. So for now we're going radio silent. That's why I need you to go there personally. Central core? Skynet's main reactor. The source of all their power. We shut down the central core, we shut down Skynet. Connor's preparing the attack as we speak. So you understand we can't have any critical complications at this stage. If you don't mind me asking, how did you end up here? Excuse me if I act a little surprised, Sergeant. But no one in here thinks it's wise to ask their superior personal questions. But since you did, I'll humor you. So, how did I get here? The same way you did. I was born, raised, and given a gun. We don't really have a say in what we do, do we? Or do I assume too much? Was it any different for you? Hmm? Why do you fight, Sergeant? It's the right thing to do. There's nothing noble in what we do. Humans were fighting humans since the beginning of time. It just so happens that right now we have a common enemy. If it wasn't for the machines, we'd probably be fighting each other. That doesn't mean we should give up and stop fighting. No. No, it doesn't. I'm just warning you. Don't hold your breath waiting for all this to be over. There will always be another war. Besides, I'm not a fighter. When I go out there in the middle of the night with my Westinghouse, I'm not looking for a fight. I look to seek and conquer. I'm not a fighter. I'm a bully. What's the difference? I don't treat them as equals. 
And although I know they're just machines, I want them to fear me. No one ever stands up to bullies. But I have to admit, it has its downsides. One of them being that no one ever asks me a personal question. At least not since Perry died. So congratulations, Rivers. It takes guts to stand up to a bully. I guess since your promotion, you got a little more cocky. Good for you.